Hey, Margie here. I've been getting a lot of questions about peptides, so I thought it was time we delved into this on the podcast. And the good news is that peptides can help our bones and overall health, but many of us really have no idea what they are and how they can be used. So today, that's what we're going to talk about with our special guest, Dr. Reka Milanovic Galbraith. And Dr. Reka has been successfully leading women and their families to optimal health for over two decades as a board-certified family medicine doctor. She is a leading functional medicine expert in hormone replacement and peptides certified by the Institute for Functional Medicine. She's an international speaker and mentor to practitioners, having trained hundreds of practitioners. She has successfully run retreats for women, group online programs for women, and sees patients at the clinic she founded, Simply Health Institute outside of Chicago. As a woman and an entrepreneur, she is passionate about empowering women to optimal health and performance so that they can empower their families and others. She also has expertise in longevity and performance, autoimmune disease, and nutrigenics. And in today's topic, she discusses what peptides are and which ones she has found can be helpful for our bones as well as our overall health and how they can be used. So lots of great information. Stay tuned. Welcome, Dr. Rika. I'm really happy to have you here on the podcast. I love the work you do. And the topic today is something I get asked about so much about, you know, what are peptides? I've been hearing a lot about it and can that help my bones? So I'm just excited that you're here to share that with us. So welcome. Thank you, Margie, for having me. I just so love educating um, the masses so that people can make the best choices for their health and really live life to the fullest. Meanwhile, before we get started, I just have to give a shout out to your new book. I know you gave me a copy that that I could read beforehand because it's coming out shortly, but it is great. And I love the title, Energized, Feel Fabulous Forever. I mean, that's sort of my philosophy on life that you want to be energized and life is to enjoy. So the title energized feel fabulous forever is just, but what's so nice about it is you make it so easy and we'll talk about it later, but I just, it, you know, you make it easy. You sum things up and then you give tasks to do and you give examples and case studies. So I just really, congratulations, you just did a fabulous job. And I think it's, you know, it's something for everyone. There's something in there that can really, really change your life. So anyway, but let's get back. I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed it and I'm excited for you to get this out to the world. So let's start with peptides now. How did you, well, let's just even do, I always like to hear the backstory. So maybe start with how you got into the work you did and how specifically you decided to get trained in peptides and add that to your practice. Yeah, so to get into functional medicine, you know, when I was a little girl, I was five years old, I knew I had three dreams. I wanted to become a doctor. I wanted to have my own children. That was the second dream. And the third dream was really to cure everyone, or so I thought when I was so young. And, you know, pretty soon after I got out, I realized I'm not really curing anyone. And the most common symptom that would come through my doors was fatigue. And we were trained in medical school as you do the exam and you do the blood work. And now with the average visit being seven minutes, um, sometimes the exam and or the blood work doesn't happen and definitely not the exam. And when it would come back normal, you were to suggest to the patient that perhaps they were depressed. And little did I know that I was actually suffering from fatigue, but I had really minimized it until it really came to a head. And it led to so many symptoms um, from infertility to endometriosis, to vision losing migraines, to PMS, to uh, Hashimoto's thi- thyroiditis, to then ultimately culminating where um, I started feeling so sick and weak and like my muscles were weak working out. And I had I ran labs on myself. We we're living in a foreign country at the time. We spent eight years living abroad as expatriates. It was something my husband wanted us to do together before we got married. And, or, I mean, he wanted us, he wanted me to commit to it before we got married and to enjoy it as a married couple. And we were there and uh, my liver enzymes were more than um, like almost 10 times normal. They were really escalating. And that was what, so my liver was essentially failing and no one knew why. And we took the celebratory trip and I, I was thinking we were supposed to be excited about returning back to the United States to see family and friends. And 
And while I was excited, I couldn't help but think as I listened to my kids, there was the swimming pool, uh, jumping in and out, doing cannibals, watch me, mommy, watch me, mommy. And all I could think of was, I might leave these children without a mommy. And it was uh, and it, it was just the worst thought and thoughts just kept running through my mind. They might not have a mommy see them graduate from high school or college or have their own children, children that I would have loved to sing a song to. Like I sang to them, I sang them the same lullaby, Hush Little Baby, night after night until they no longer wanted me to. And um, even until probably three or four years of age after I read stories, I'd always sing them to sleep. And um, what happened was after that trip, I said, I'm going to take the matter into my own hands. I'd actually found functional medicine, was going to take my first job, but I wasn't well-versed. And I said, I'm going to find a colleague that's going to take me through the functional medicine approach, and I'm going to do everything that he says. And um, with the help of a colleague, I implemented everything he said, and my liver enzymes normalized after six weeks. Yeah, and I felt great and much to the dismay of the doctors because they really suspected I had autoimmune hepatitis, which the stats then, they may have changed. Um, I don't look back, <laughs> so they may have changed. The, then were that if I was not on a steroid, the mortality rate was up to 50% in three to five years. So that's high. And it's been 10 years, no diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis officially, um, no need for steroids. And uh, since then, as you know, I've written this book, I've recovered now into the tens of thousands of people over the last decade from their symptoms, a lot of them with low energy and a wide variety of autoimmune diseases. And I've written this book and the goal really is to now help millions recover without having the need to see me. So that was the first story. Yeah, it's a mouthful, right? You know, I love it though. And not that I love it, but we grow from, we, you know, when we go through our biggest challenges, it's our biggest growth experience. And then it's so beautiful that you took that and now you're sharing it with others and you've been helping thousands of people. So I love these stories and that's sort of my mission as well to just help people dig deep. That's like my, you know, I always feel dig deep, don't settle for there's nothing we can do or a diagnosis that just seems so horrible and, you know, and the trajectory isn't good. So, yes. So I love that. My husband had a similar story, not quite like that, but you know, where he was told there was nothing that can be done and we had to dig deep and figure it out. So that's sort of this community and my philosophy. So it's such, such a good story. And I think this book is the culmination to really get it out there. So yes. Okay. So now let's talk about how you got into peptides and how that's been helping people in your practice. Well, um, with the peptides, you know, every year I'd encounter a patient I couldn't help or, and so I'd learn more and learn more. And it went from studying nutrigenetics to dig, be, diving deep into Dale Bredesen's um, Alzheimer's reversal protocol, which I trained with. And then William Walsh's has a nutrient power that helps people with mental health um, issues and speaks specifically to copper overload. And so I kept combining and um, I was just, I had heard about peptides right around the time of the pandemic and was going to start studying it. And I noticed that the FDA was pulling certain peptides off the market. And I thought, well, why would I study this if it's not going to be present any longer? Well, they're pulling certain ones off because they're effective against a certain virus and we won't go there, but they were. And um, a year later when they were still on the market and even the one that was pulled was then resurfaced, I said, you know, I'm going to study the, these peptides. And again, it's so timely. It's like the universe calls to you because Within the time of the pandemic, uh, my mom, who has been my biggest cheerleader, and you'll read about her in the book, um, really her health started to dwindle, where she's been in and out of the hospital so many times it's almost difficult to count. And since October, I've been out there four times, and she lives two states over to really be there. And the gratitude I have is that I could show up. Like, she showed up for me time and time again. And one of her admissions in February was that she had probably had a partial shoulder dislocation, but she had dislocated permanently, was in acute pain. And unfortunately, because of the level of that, it was already partially out for a long time, they suspected they couldn't get it back in. So she's in agony, in utter agony, and I'm out there. And by then, I was already doing peptides in my practice. And um, I plead the fifth as to whether I brought some peptides in to help her. But um, she went from where she's crying out in pain to screaming in pain to complete wailing. And this is my mother who sat at home with a broken wrist for three days one time when she fell on it and had no idea. It took her three days to finally say, okay, maybe I should have this examined because it really hurts. 
And um, so, you know, then they end up giving her narcotics. So I started a few peptides, one to control inflammation. We got her quiet very quickly, one to support just healthy aging and one to give her um, energy to support her mitochondria. And so what I'm passionate about is, you know, mitochondrial dysfunction. Pretty quickly, she was pain-free. And when she resumed therapy, she had been at this, she's still at the same rehab institute, unfortunately, um, several times before. So she was well known to all the therapists. They couldn't believe the energy that she had. Not to mention that she's now having to learn how to walk with one arm in a sling and she uses a walker. So she had a stand, get to a stand without the benefit of that hand. And so we got her home and um, that was her goal. Her only wish was to get home. And subsequently, unfortunately, she's had two more admissions to the hospital yeah, that was just February and she's been admitted twice. And um, this last time she had, was only home for 10 minutes and she missed sitting down in a chair. That's it. She fell to her bum. So she needed and she broke her leg and she just um, and she was in rehab now for two months. One of the months they said, sorry, she isn't advancing. We got to cut her loose. And of course, she wasn't stable to go home. So she stayed um, in the nursing home side. And then after they got her out of her boot, she went back to rehab. But during this time, she said, you know, honey, I'm just ready. I'm ready to go meet your father and my mother, and I'm ready. And she asked for me not to prolong her life. And so um, that's the hardest um, thing to do uh, for the biggest cheerleader in my life is to then withdraw that level of support. And then just be there in other ways. And gosh, uh, I guess I haven't told the story yet. And that's about for my the talk that you know about coming up soon um, that I'll be delivering. But that's my impetus. And my next driver is not only to help people reclaim their energy for life and of their youth. And I say, if you don't have the energy that you did as a child, then you really are missing out. And that's your first tip off. And don't let it get to be where you have no quality of life and you're mentally all there. Your mind is all there like my mom because it's really painful for the person that's experienced it. And I would say equally painful for the loved one watching it. It's just super hard. But yeah. And what I've found since then is um, just in regard to peptides, they're really packing a punch. And I really think that's going to be the next wave of helping us. But anti-aging needs to start the screening in our 20s. And then uh, more aggressively in our 40s and definitely by 50, you better consider, you know, even doing the diet and lifestyle because there's so much we can do just from that aspect. And that's what my book set really speaks to is these are the foundational, even though it's my 3D protocol, there's nine steps. So there's if I told people it was nine, they'd be like, oh, my God, that's too many steps. But it's really simpler and they all tie into one another. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's it's. I mean, there's so much that can be done and, and people really do underestimate and it's just unfortunate that it, you know, all these critical steps are not mainstream. And as you're going to your yearly visit, they're not, you know, it's not something that people are really making sure that everybody is doing. So I, I think, and they're doable. That's, and I think you, you really break it down. So it is easy. Your five R's and your three D's and your, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> yeah, yeah the, your gut, the, the gut part was really quite good. Anyway, so back to peptides, let's talk about the bones. So let's yeah. talk about specifically how you have been using peptides to help people, whether they have osteopenia, osteoporosis, you know, as well as, well, let me just go from there. What have you seen that's really been making a difference? Because people are confused. They've heard about it and, and they don't even know exactly what it is. So why don't we start what it is and then how we can, how you have been able with what specific peptides you've seen that have helped people with their bone health. Yeah. So um, just to give people the definition and overarching picture, what are peptides? So peptides are am amino acids and their amino acids are um, short chains, and they have to be under, I think it's 50 amino acids to be called a, or considered a peptide. And we naturally produce peptides in our body over 7,000, but like with anything with age, they decrease in number. Um, and specific, the one that most people would know is insulin. Insulin is a peptide. And the, the peptide that's made national news all over the place is uh, Ozempic and Manjaro. Those are actually peptides. Uh, for the most part, many of them do not carry very many side effects. 
uh, aside from Linjaro and um, Ozempic. And I say, you know, foundationally, you, you have to lay the foundation or those are, you're going to have more side effects. So that's my own one tip off. And there is a time and place for them, but unfortunately they're being utilized a little bit as designer drugs. And I think uh, that should probably be stopped and the people prescribing them should really just be mindful of them. I've had people come in and and vomiting for days because they are not foundationally stable and then they don't have good digestive system. And so they're the most nauseated, but getting back to, so that's what they are. And I'm going to just run through some of the peptides and give cases of how they work and how it's relevant to osteoporosis, if that's okay for you and penia. Yeah, I think that would be great. Yeah. So the first is BPC. Uh, 157, and that stands for body protection compound. So think about it. It protects our body. And uh, where it really packs the punch is that it pretty much in heal, heals intestinal permeability, which is leaky gut. And so foundationally, we say anyone that is struggling with osteopenia and persis needs to have a foundational diet that's anti-inflammatory, that provides them the right nutrients. And then they need to be able to absorb those nutrients. And if you have intestinal permeability, you may not absorb things that well. You may react to things that are normally considered healthy. And that's so that seals up the gut. Um, and where else we use BPC is I've been shutting down autoimmune disease pretty much like that. It can be one to three months. Um, given orally is preferably, but ironically, it can be injected under the skin. We call that subcutaneously. And it's, I've also shut it down that way. And for some people, that's more effective. The other way I've utilized it is recovery from exercise. So people recover quicker. So you can dose it one or two times a day if it's oral, preferably once a day, daily for a while. I'll use it for recovery post-operatively. So I had a woman just have a bilateral knee replacement almost back to back. And she is astounded as to how good she came, uh, she's she's doing. And she came to me pretty debilitated. So we had laid the foundation for that peptide to work even better. Um, and then lastly, you just got to be careful. BPC-157 is on the WAP, uh, the WADA ban list. So if you're a high level professional athlete, you, you can't use it, unfortunately. But that's not many of us, right? So uh, for most people, and I'd say all my autoimmune disease sufferers, I'll put them on it uh, when they first see me for a period of three months and then reassess and see if it's right to continue. And I give them the option and I say, probably because you're going to encounter things like environmental toxins on a day-to-day -day basis, et cetera, that can contribute to leaky gut. And remember, leaky gut or intestinal permeability is one of the parameters that needs to be present for autoimmune disease to occur. You have to have that genetic predisposition, the trigger, and then the leaky gut. And so I'll say we can either continue it once a day orally or, you know, have you put it off to the side. And then if you have a flare, start it immediately. So those are some of the benefits. So again, for your osteopenia porosis, uh, folks, it's really to seal the leaky gut so they're absorbing their nutrients. And um, it just seems like leaky gut is predisposes to everything under the sun. Um, yeah. Have you heard of that one, Margie, the BPC-157? You know, I've heard of it, but I haven't worked with it or had anybody on that you know, at, at all. Um, yeah. I have a question. So people who are on a leaky gut protocol, whether they're taking, um, you know, there's like all sorts of things that people are taking to help leaky gut. In Some people are on colostrum, you know, some people are on all different things. Is there any problem if they are already taking supplements, adding this, it doesn't conflict at all? No, That's not at great. all. And I'll put, so my non-autoimmune disease sufferers, I put people on it for the full six to eight weeks and I'm starting to use it uh, instead of glutamine. So glutamine is hallmark, but you know, glutamine, you have to mix it in water, you know, to get the appropriate dose, you have to mix it in water. It should be before meals, at least 15 minutes or so. And you know, it's not as convenient for people who are on the go. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. As a, I always say the beauty of medicine is there's an art. And so that was what I've replaced it with over the last three to six months. And we're still seeing really, really good results. Um, and I, I would be um, kind of two other ways it's helped that are not necessarily related to, related to osteoporosis is I've had two cases of refractory acid reflux, so esophagitis. Mm -hmm. In that instance, you can take the BPC capsule, so open it and empty it into, into a cup and put a little water, swish and then swallow. And that targets the esophagus and stomach, so esophagitis, gastritis, um, whereas when it's in the capsule, get to the intestine. 
And that's where the intestinal permeability occurs. So it depends on what you want to target. Shut them down in about two months of care and then I've continued them. And in both cases, these people were not tolerating, on top of having a terrible reflux symptoms, they were not tolerating a wide variety of foods. They could increase and diversify what they were able to eat. So that's huge, especially one of the uh, patients was um, in their 20s. And so just newly out into a job and wanting to socialize and eat out at restaurants and could not eat out at restaurants. So severely impacting um, I'd say is mental health because he couldn't socialize like he wanted to. Oh, that's so interesting. And is there one company or are there, you know, how do you choose which ones to use? Are they all the same? I obviously they're not. That's but- a great question, Margie. I love it that you are just so in tune, even though you said, mm-hmm. Hey, I heard of it. Um, what I tell my folks is I'm only using sterile compounding pharmacies because many on the internet, and let's go there. We have to go there. Your your listeners have to know that a lot of them are research purposes only, and it'll say not even for animal consumption, or it'll say for animal use only. I just can't put my name behind that because you have, if it's not in sterile conditions, especially if you're injecting it, you know, what a worse way to get, like to have something not happen that or have an undesirable outcome. So I use sterile compounding pharmacies only, and there's a variety of them throughout the United States. Um, they all have some similar price points, and we found some that I think are reputable that maybe are more competitive with pricing, so that's who we go to. Um, but yeah, and I'd say you, you really need a, a practitioner guiding you and prescribing. I would not be buying from some of the ones that say animal use only or for research purposes and not human or, or animal consumption, so that's a little concerning. When you're finding a practitioner, I know you've had certain certifications. Is there something people should look for? Yeah, so I've done, it's funny, um, I've done two, um, I, or I've done multiple courses, but there's two big groups. It's um, it's um, Dr. Seeds has a big course, so there's a seed certification. I've done his course. Um, I haven't fully certified. And then I do, have done A4Ms, Create a certification. And I think that one's through the International Peptide Society. It's so funny. I just need to submit the hours to get that mm-hmm. certification. So I better be on the move because I do value the training and we're constantly learning. And I think the thing is you get the foundational training as a practitioner and then you implement and then you share, you share your cases. So we've created um, almost like a study group of um, people prescribing peptides. We call it PepDocs. And we're sharing cases all the time. And then I have a local colleague that's utilizing them too. And so it, it's just a simple text thread. We don't share people's names. We'll say, hey, I have a patient with X, Y, Z. They seem to not be responding or they are doing, they have these symptoms. How would you manage it? And then that's really where the growth comes is where you're continually learning and adjusting protocols. And I tell people, you know, that book, the book I wrote, Energize, Feel Fantastic Forever is In the book, I have a resource page people can go to because I want to be able to update that like quarterly or every six months because what I do today is far vastly different than what I did 10 years ago. The foundational stuff doesn't change. So diet, good sleep, exercise, good community, you know, um, being outdoors in nature, all of those things don't change. But the way we treat uh, I've been become more and more efficient and we're getting a lot slicker and helping people out because, you know, people fatigue, fatigue on protocols. And we don't want them to fatigue on the protocol. We want them to get feeling so well they can do the other after they do the first two or three steps, they can do the other six. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because I think a problem initially, I know when I've been into integrative medicine for so many years, and one of the problems was everybody was in their own silos and they were getting good results, but they weren't sharing it. And then, so how does that information get out so that it can be used by more people? So that's great that you're sharing case studies. How fantastic is that? Wow. Okay. So let's go on to the next one. Yeah. So then my next line of attack is, um, so we, every woman or even man who is suffering from osteopenia or purses, needs to be counseled on bioidentical hormones, but I'm not going to speak to those because I know you've had other podcasts. I'm going to go to what if someone doesn't want full hormone replacement, what can we do? So after they've been run through the foundational approach, I always say my 3D protocol, which is diet and nutrients, digestion, and detox typically leads to as much hormone balance as you're going to get 
particularly if someone's perimenopausal or menopausal or an andropause or approaching it where the hormones are dropping. So um, one way to support natural hormone production is to give peptides that support the formation and release of growth hormone. So it's not growth hormone, but there's growth hormone releasing hormone and growth hormone releasing peptide. One helps you make growth hormone and one, it's, so it's a secretagogue and one helps you, uh, oh, so one makes you and one helps you release it. Um, and so usually given in combination, the two that I like um, to date is CJC and uh, 1295 and uh, ipamorelin. And so those are the two that I use in combination. They can be given right before bed. Uh, in the, if you're really looking for more aggressive weight loss or someone to really recover and feel better, you might give a, a dose in the morning fasted, and then you might give a dose mid-morning. Before bedtime, really shouldn't have anything to eat at least 90 minutes before you, you inject. And what I've seen clinically is people lean out. They feel more vibrant. They recover even better from exercise. So even more so than when just PP BPC alone. Um, and if they're on hormones, we can drop those levels of hormones that they're taking or withdraw them. So I had a woman I was using testosterone cream in. She had really low levels and we had already done her foundational work over the course of a year. So that's a long time. And she was a little resistant and said, okay, I'll try the testosterone. She felt immensely better. Then we gave her the... Um, CJC ipamorelin, and she was able to come off the testosterone. So that's pretty slick. Now, what I would say is that particular peptide. So anytime you inject peptides, you small risk of side effects, meaning that um, skin irritation, sometimes itchy skin. I get hives from one of them. It's one hive, so it's like a mosquito bite in the area, pretty itchy. Um, so those are things that can happen. Um, the growth hormone peptides really should not be used in anyone who has known cancer because it's going to stimulate growth. And the last thing you want to do is to stimulate a rapidly dividing cell to divide even quicker, which is the case with cancer. So some of my patients have opted for the screening uh, to do a cancer test screening. So there's lots of ways. One particular one screens for over 50 cancers. And if it's negative, it gives you like 99.6 0.6 or 0.4% that you don't have these particular cancers. So it's not foolproof, but almost. And of course, they've come out with the whole body imaging, the Pronovo MRI body scan too. But yeah, so if someone were to get the diagnosis, they need to stop the growth hormone peptides right away. But And we typically cycle on and off. So we give them five days a week, do that for three months and take them off for a month and then revisit it and repeat. And yeah, and so that's going to support um, you know estrogen production, which is what we need to have healthy bones. It's probably the top one. So I'd say probably that comes in right behind estrogen is almost number two in supporting it. And like with estrogen, you want to know, the thing that I want to know is I either want to know the genetics of their hormone metabolism, how they break down their hormones, and I'll give you some examples, or I actually want to look at the metabolites of the hormones in a urine test um, that we'll look at those. And why it's important to know which way hormones break down is, for example, if you give something that stimulates testosterone formation or you give testosterone, there's two ways that can be broken down. Um, one is DHT. And if that happens quickly, you're going to get frontal hair thinning. That's not desirable in men or women, neither. And um, so you want to know how quickly they do that. And I met with someone yesterday in, in my high level um, patients who really, the high performers that want the executive, we call it the executive edge package. We run genetics. And for her, she converts too quickly to DHT. So now I know I can block that conversion if we go on to testosterone replacement therapy. So she's not quite ready yet, but it's super important to know. Alternatively, you can break that testosterone more quickly to estradiol. And in a man, so in a woman, you can cause them to have their breast enlargement. They may not like that or tenderness, but in men, man boobs are having them gain weight on their hips or thighs. And so they don't like that either, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, so that's interesting. Now, there are a lot of people in this community who grew up in a time where, you know, they're just absolutely terrified because there was a period of time where everybody was taken off after that women's health study. So they've never been on estrogen. They may be already in their late 60s, 70s. Um, you know, so they've never been on hormone replacement. Is there any problem for them going on this, you know, after so many years past menopause? 
They would say a preferable is that first up to best, you know, the benefit to the brain is seen in the first five years. And then after 10 years, if you are at risk of having cardiovascular disease, you have to be careful so you can um, you know, unintentionally invoke that because there's a smaller risk of, hey, you know, are we going to flip more clots? But what's interesting is that the women that didn't get it, we saw higher cardiovascular disease rates after everyone was taken off. And that's because estrogen is protective. So you can argue either way. And in fact, what I would say, my clinical experience is anyone that comes in with dementia, we're putting them all on hormones. It's in the hormone, it's in the Alzheimer's reversal protocol, regardless of age. We do counsel on risk, so they have to have their mammograms, their annual gyne exams. I look at serum lab work. I look at, depending on how we place them, sometimes saliva, and definitely I'm looking at the metabolites at least twice a year. So sometimes I'll do it initially, get them on, before we do hormones, so we know how they break it down, get them on hormones three months later, and then we we tweak the protocol. Yeah, super important to follow all of that. Okay. And so, okay, so let's keep keep moving. So that's so very interesting that you can use that in conjunction or it seems to be able to then use, you know, you can mix it up and it, it's more effective. How, how fantastic is that? Yeah, in conjunction with hormones or standalone. And then, so I think this is a nice segue into what if a uh, woman or man does not want hormones? Like A, they're so scared and despite having that conversation, I say it should be a collaborative dialogue, not a monologue of where I'm explaining the, ri- uh, the risk versus benefits that the patient is actively asking me questions. We're, we're doing the context of their history, their symptoms, and how bad their bones um, are at the current, bone health is at the current time, is that you can give one peptide called oxytocin. So all of us know that oxytocin is the love hormone. So it's released after we deliver so that we love our babies and it's released after we have intercourse or sex. And um, it does make you feel good. Um, One of the FDA approved uses for it is actually for oxytocin is uh, female hyposexual arousal disorder. So fancy term for low libido. So we're going to, we're going to hit all aspects. And I would probably venture to guess a lot of people who have osteopenia or porosis may also have a little bit of maybe struggling with low libido. And I'll share with you what my patients have said about, even with the CJC epimorelin, that they'll say, I didn't know I had a libido issue. It was like, after a month of use, it was like, hello, libido. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I know, isn't that great? Um, Say they don't want hormones. And oxytocin is nice because it can be given as a nasal spray. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. (laughs) Yeah. And it's the price point's not too high. I think in our clinic, we're getting in about $170 for a month. I mean, there is an investment, but you're looking at what's the alternative. So my mom was in that genre of no one counseled her on hormones because it was taboo. It, they were all yanked off the market. And her limiting factor is that she has osteoporosis to such a degree that she walks at a 90 degree angle. That's her physical limitation. And that doesn't allow for her to take a full breath. So then she's short of breath. And on top of it, she has heart failure, makes her more short of breath. And on top of that, she probably had many years of undiagnosed sleep apnea and she has um, high pressures in her pulmonary arteries. So she has one, two, three, four reasons why this poor woman is not able to get there energy wise and is short of breath with movement. And top of it, just walking is difficult being so slouched over. And I'd say that's the alternative. If you don't do something, you should know, you should do as much as you can that you feel comfortable accepting the risks versus benefits. And, and then also conversely, if you don't do some of the steps, accepting the risk of developing, you know, that, um, kyphosis where you're really hunched over and I don't wish that on, on anyone, but yeah. And so um, the oxytocin, like I said, not the price point's good, delivered in a nasal spray. I just was tracking some, we're doing one spray, one nostril, and believe it or not, you can look at NT, NTX, N-telopeptide, and you want to have that under 38. And so this woman, we did one spray a day and she was you know, 36, 37, and um, uh, she was a little bit better than before, but that didn't look so great. So we bumped her up to two times a day, two sprays, so one spray in each nostril once a day. And her numbers drop. So she now her N- N-telopeptide levels are low. So she is that what that tells us 
to explain to your audience. I'm sorry I brought up a term and no, no, no. I was just, I was just gonna like, I was just gonna butt in and, and explain what that means because a lot of yeah. people are aware of the NTX and the CTX. So yeah, yeah. And so it, it tells us: Are you actually? Do you actually have active bone loss? Are you, you know, are you or? And so that's what you want to know. And so, um, so for her, we've given her the clearance, and we'll probably go to a six months review of that lab, and then maybe yearly, but. Um, Sadly, with the bone densities, you're not able to repeat those. You know, they say you got to wait 18 months or whatever it is. And uh, I haven't done a deep dive in the literature to say, could you do it earlier or not? But um, to, uh, I'm sure you've talked to your audience about this. But I had a woman come in and say, oh, I have osteopenia. And I looked at the results. I'm like, no, you don't. You have osteoporosis. Minus 2.4 is only 0.1 away from the minus 2.5. So for all intents and purposes, this is osteoporosis. So for that particular patient, she's a, she was actually a breast cancer patient who was undergoing active treatment and um, genetically did not metabolize estrogen, was being seen by an integrative oncologist. So there would, in her instance, she probably is a no-go to ever put on estrogen replacement. So her best option, uh, you know, I wouldn't even do growth hormone in her, but I would certainly do oxytocin because it has no ramifications on the... Um, hormone aspect. And so it was not going to put her at increased risk for having a recurrence or not do well with the current treatment she is on. Wow. I think that's so interesting. I know this is so new that they probably don't have studies showing that, but if they measured the CTX or they measured the bone breakdown, that's so important because that's the activity of the osteoclast. And that's huge. I mean, that's, you know, if we can change that. We're making such a big impact on the bone health because for so many people, it is very high and they are actively losing bone. How interesting is that? So, yeah. you try, I mean, oxytocin, you know, just being around girlfriends helps that. So be around, <laughs> you, know, you know, just be with those you love. Your oxytocin will get higher and, you know. Yeah. yeah. But, no, but then to, to addition, but in addition to have this peptide, that can actually make a big difference. Wow. I love that. That's so yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There are studies, but it's not FDA, whatever, approved. And as we all know, uh, you know, like most things, we're using stuff off label. So there are stu some studies that support that, yeah, hey, this is actually helping us regenerate bones. And I, if I had to pick an order, I'd say hormones, number one, particularly estrogen. Number two is growth hormone peptide. Number three is oxytocin, probably in that order. And then, you know, we need more studies, right? And then track track the NTX, the CTX, and then see what that gets you and make sure they're doing all the foundational things. Are they doing weight-bearing exercise? And unfortunately, both you and I know it's not just walking. Walking's good, but it's, you know, weight-bearing with weights. So, you know, doing your squats with your dumbbells in your hands and um, same with the lunges. And I did my workout this morning and I tell people, you don't need a whole lot to maintain that muscle mass. Um, and making sure you're not inflamed in a in a breakdown state. So if you're eating food that's inflammatory for your body, you're in an inflammatory state. You're breaking things down. If you're highly stressed, all of these steps I talk about in my book. If you're high, that you know the three S's are sleep, stress, and sex. And I use sex for movement. So instead of exercise, I needed I needed a neat way to remember it. But you know, if you're highly stressed, you're producing cortisol, and you're in a catabolic state. You're breaking things down. If you're not sleeping. You're inflamed and in a catabolic state, so you're not making, you know, bone. And so these are all the things that people have to kind of um, also be mindful of, not just, you know, you do the foundational work and then look at, talk to a practitioner that can lay out all these options and walk you through safe hormone replacement, walk you through safe peptide prescribing and usage. And then when you can't, if there's nothing else, then oxytocin is going to be, like you said, maybe maybe we're having a, a, a get together with our girlfriends um, for lunch and then we're meeting up with our husbands at night. <laughs> <laughs> so how do people, I know that you work with people in different ways and um, yeah, so how do people, you know, if someone was interested, oh gosh, this sounds so great. I'm really interested. But, you know, as, as you said, I, mean, I think it's so important because, you know, you pull up YouTube and you'll see peptides for athletes and they're selling this and you can inject yourself and it can be very scary and very unsafe. So if someone wanted to work with you, how does, how does that work? 
Yeah. So I'm based outside of Chicago. And as a medical doctor, you do have to establish that doctor-patient relationship. So someone, if they wanted me to prescribe peptides or hormones or any of these things we've talked about, is they would have to see me one time in person um, per year. So we are near an international airport. We have people that fly in from all over the United States now and all over the world, to be honest. And so it's that one visit, they're thrilled, then we can do all follow-ups um, via Zoom. Um, I am exploring options of, can we you know, expand and do the multi-state license? So there's still some, you almost have to see them once a year. So, and I'm hopeful pretty soon they're gonna widen this up. We've already proven to the world that you can do more than adequate. Um, you can give stellar um, care just by, with, with telehealth. Um, so that's how the end my website's drrika.com. I'm sure you'll have that link. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. You know, we do have online programs. So we just relaunched. We have a foundational program for women, women called the She Reset. So it's that first D. It's a first D, the diet part. And I say you have to lay that anyway. And that could be done remotely because it's a, a coaching program done in a group status. And then we don't have to. And it's really led by my health coach. You know, I created after many years of doing this first doing diet and weight loss the wrong way now to do it the right way <laughs> without using you know crazy drugs that only when you stop them make you lose you know regain the weight but that's foundational we're going to keep going so we're going to create programs um, around all the d's diet digestion detox and then even a hormone so eventually we'll have you know full 360 we call it she 360 um, so we'll get the full circle that people will be able to do online. Now it still won't be, I still won't be able in that context, be able to prescribe anything unless they see me. Yeah. Oh, but that's great. That's, but for a lot of people, Chicago's a fun place and it's only one time. So I, I think, you know, I have people flying all over for different practitioners because if you can't get the help and people tell you there's nothing you can do mm -hmm. when no one wants to be in that place and, and you don't have to. And then in mm -hmm. terms of the book, the be is there the best place to get the book? And I know I that, you know, what's the what's the best way? Just I'll have a link. Is it Amazon or should they get it? In yeah, three places so they can. And there'll be a link on my website, drreika.com. Uh, we're gonna we're building out a site, energizedthebook.com, and that's where the resources page will be housed. Um, that'll be energized.com forward slash resources. And then, yes, you can go straight to Amazon. And as you know, it'll be released here at the end of October. So um, very shortly, it is available for pre-order on um, in ebook ebook format currently. And then we'll have hardback and paperback. And either towards the end of the year or in the new year, we'll do Audible. Because that's how I ingest all my information. So I have got to make it available in Audible format. Yeah, I love Audible. I drive so much into New York City and back. I've done so many books on Audible, but that, that's so great. Well, I can't, any last minute things? I can't thank you enough. This has been so wonderful. No, just know that, like, I think you've said it a few times, is know that there, when people tell you there's no, nothing else that can be done, that there always is, and that we're moving the needles and I, I'm just getting, we have to call it putting things into reversal or remission but shoot, I almost want to call it a cure just to spite them all. But we're getting reversals on things that we didn't think was possible before. So always question. And when you establish a relationship with a practitioner, make sure it's mutually respectful and collaborative. It's so important. Um, otherwise, it's not. it doesn't benefit you. It doesn't benefit the practitioner either. So yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure being together. And good luck with the book. I know to me, it's just so exciting, the thought that, you know, this will be out to the world and, you know, how, how wonderful your work and what you've put together is going to be out there for everybody. So thanks so much. And I look forward to staying in touch. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Dr. Rika as much as I did, and now have a better understanding of peptides and how they can be used to improve our bones and overall health. All the links that Dr. Rika talked about will be in the show notes, including the link to her new book energized, feel fabulous forever. I just love that title. And it's really a wonderful book. I, I highly recommend it. There's just so many great, so many great tips and even for sleep, even how to, even how to prioritize your time. The very last section had this fantastic thing on what to do with time management, but it's just a great book. And make sure to download my Improve Your Bone Health Naturally mini course to help you on your path to optimal bone health. 
So thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.